Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. In today's video, we'll be answering the question, what are irregular graphs, and why are they boring? And indeed, they are boring, but their boringness does lead to some interesting discussions, so I think we'll have a little bit of fun. This is another viewer-requested video. I really appreciate those requests, so be sure to leave yours down in the comments. Without further ado, let's get into irregular graphs. Just looking at the word irregular suggests that the definition of irregular graphs should be the opposite of regular graphs. With that in mind, let's quickly recap what regular graphs are. Remember that a graph is regular if all vertices in the graph have the same degree. So here's an example of a regular graph. This graph is regular because every vertex in this graph has degree 2. Remember that the degree of a vertex is the number of vertices it's adjacent to. So this vertex is adjacent to one, two vertices. This vertex, same thing, adjacent to one, two vertices. And the same goes for these two vertices. So this is a regular graph because every vertex has the same degree. And in particular, in this graph, every vertex has degree two. So this is just a simple example of a regular graph. With that definition in mind, it would seem natural to define irregular graphs like this. A graph is irregular if all of its vertices have distinct degrees, or equivalently, a graph is irregular if none of its vertices have the same degree. So what's an example of an irregular graph? Well, here's one, this graph here, with just one vertex and no edges. So what's so boring about irregular graphs? Well, what's boring is that this is, in fact, the only irregular graph. That's right, it might seem a little crazy, but believe it or not, this is the only one. Of course, this graph is irregular because no vertices in the graph have the same degree. You could say that there is one other irregular graph, which is the graph that has no vertices and no edges. This is sometimes called the null graph, but some texts don't even consider this to be a graph. But either way, depending on what you consider to be a graph, there's either one irregular graph or two irregular graphs, but no more. So then the natural question to ask is how do we know that this here is the only irregular graph? How can we be sure that no others exist? Well, let's find out, and if you're familiar with proofs, what we're going to do here is basically a proof by contradiction. We're going to suppose that there exists an irregular graph other than these two that we just talked about. If that's the case, then this irregular graph must have at least two vertices, because if it has only one vertex, then it has to be this graph, and if it has zero vertices, then it has to be this graph. So it's got at least two vertices. Let's just list these vertices out without drawing any of the edges. So here are some of the vertices. I'll draw some black dots here. So we know these vertices could go on and on and on to some final vertex. And now let's label these. This could be the first vertex. This could be the second. It has to have at least two vertices. And then we might have a third vertex all the way up to an nth vertex. So again, we don't know how many vertices this hypothetical irregular graph has, but it has to have at least two. Then I'll just write in black here, labels, so that we know those numbers are referring to labels of these vertices. What could the possible degrees of the vertices in this graph be? Well, the smallest degree a vertex could possibly have is zero. So zero is less than or equal to the degree of every vertex in this graph. What's the maximum degree that a vertex in this graph could have? Well, there's n vertices in the graph, and a vertex can't be adjacent to itself, so the maximum is n minus 1. n minus 1 is the greatest degree that a vertex in this graph could have, which would mean it's adjacent to every other vertex in the graph. So this statement here is true. We'll write this. For all vertices v that are in the vertex set, of G. We'll call this graph G, just so we have a name to call it. So for all vertices in the vertex set of this graph here, the degree of that vertex has to be anywhere from 0 to n minus 1. Notice that is a total of n possible degrees. The degree of any vertex in this graph G could be 0, or 1, or 2, or any positive integer all the way up to a maximum of n minus 1. So that's n possible degrees. Now we get to an important point. If there are n possible degrees, and all n vertices in our graph have distinct degrees, 
then that means there must be exactly one vertex having each of the possible degrees. So let me write this in green. We're going to label the degrees of these vertices. Again, since we have n vertices that all have distinct degrees, and we have n possible degrees from 0 to n minus 1, one vertex must have degree 0, one vertex must have degree 1, one vertex must have degree 2, and so on and so forth up to the maximum degree, one vertex must have degree n minus 1. And which vertex has which degree doesn't really matter, so the way we've labeled them now is perfectly fine. But now there's a contradiction. Do you see what the contradiction is? This vertex that we have labeled n is adjacent to n minus 1 vertices, which means that it's adjacent to all of these other vertices. But this vertex over here is adjacent to zero vertices. So both of these things can't be true. This vertex can't be adjacent to all other vertices in the graph, while this vertex is adjacent to no vertices. Thus, our assumption that such an irregular graph exists has to be false, so there doesn't exist any regular graph with more than one vertex. What's really cool about this result is it's sometimes called the party theorem. The party theorem says that at any party, at least two people have the same number of friends at that party. This, of course, requires that at least two people are at the party. So this is equivalent to saying that there exist no irregular graphs with more than one vertex. If you can't quite see why these statements are equivalent, I definitely spend a couple minutes thinking about it, seeing if you can figure it out. Because it's a pretty cool result, and I'll definitely do a video at some point that is just on the party theorem. But with all this said, the larger point is that what we would generally consider to be an irregular graph, what seems like the natural definition, actually leads to a pretty boring result, because this is the only irregular graph. So, what we'll do in some future lessons is explore some alternative definitions of irregular graphs. These other definitions do get slightly different names, as opposed to just being called irregular, but the motivation behind them is to find a class of graphs that have some sort of irregularity that are much more interesting to study than this here. And I've circled this graph like three times now, so I think that's about time to stop the lesson. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope this video helped you understand what irregular graphs are. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. I'll see you next time. Be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. I can hear your voice from all the way up here, dear. Won't you please come to me? you love it up here, dear. There's a light where I float that erases all black. It makes it